without the money Life was much cheaper when I was single Don't wanna get another gift that'll make you sigh Gotta love it, baby, please don't lie Bye-bye-bye Life should be another gift to do Just another gift under the tree for you Gotta love it, baby, please don't lie Maybe they're getting a present for you. Do you think so? Yeah. I wonder what it is. Kids, they can't even keep their eyes on what Christmas is all about. It's all about what's in it for me. And with this light on Wall Street, you'd think the average American would have a realistic hold on expenditures this Christmas season. What? Hey, everybody. Hey, Mom. Hi, Hi Mom. Got you a cup of coffee. so people wouldn't have to drive all the way out to nowhere and waste a whole Saturday? They invented them, Russ, because people forgot how to have a fun, old-fashioned family Christmas and are satisfied with scrawny, dead, overpriced trees that have no special meaning. <sighs> my toes are numb. You see, kids, this is what our forefathers did. I can't feel my leg. They walked out into the woods, they picked out that special tree, and they cut it down with their bare hands. Mom, I can't feel my hips. Clark. Yes, honey? Audrey's frozen from the waist down. Oh, that's all part of the experience, honey. There it is. This tree is a symbol of the spirit of the Griswold family Christmas. Dad, did you bring a saw? <laughs> Ready? I give you the Griswold family Christmas tree. In here. Mm. It looks great. A little full. A lot of sap.
Stupid Charlie Brown. What kind of a tree is that? You are supposed to get a good tree. Can't you even tell a good tree from a poor tree? I told you we'd goof it up. He's not the kind you can depend on to do anything right. You're hopeless, Charlie Brown. Completely hopeless. Rats! You've been dumb before, Charlie Brown, but this time you really did it. What a treat! <laughs> I guess 
Perhaps you were right, Linus. I shouldn't have picked this little tree. Everything I do turns into a disaster. I guess I really don't know what Christmas is all about. Isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? return of warmth to the earth. <sighs> you know what? Selling the Christmas trees in an open form is a grace to the American way. To erect a Christmas tree in any is definitely a violation of the separation of church and state. I look forward to working in this tree lot every year. This Christmas event is a glue that holds America together. Although, it is a toss-up between this and the 4th of July fire stand. Christmas and fireworks, that's the American spirit of unity. Okay, believe in Santa Claus is up there too. Pray for every tree that savagely jumped up and explained the average American home. Now, Christmas, their obsession with materialism is pathetic. I mean, look at the ridiculous prices on all these trees. I'll be nice to Dana the whole rest of the year. <laughs> okay, need I say more about the commercialistic draw into Commerce's giant trap? Stacy, you're so young, but they already have you ensnared. Why can't you talk like a normal kid? Stacy, I thought you were going to be nice to your big sister. Will you buy me that tree if I am? Aren't you going to enlighten Stacy that all this falls are all is blatant commercialism? I mean, where do trees fit into the Christmas story anyway? A wonderful quiz show! Jeopardy! Now what is that nice man named Alex? Trebek. He said that the Christmas tree tradition dates way back to Western Germany. Germany. Tree. The trees were brought into the homes to celebrate the annual feast of Adam and Eve on December 24th. Well, I think it's because Jesus was born in a manger. Mangers made out of wood from a tree. We sing a song about that in Sunday school.
part, the Bible says that the baby Jesus would be found wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. You know, I find it funny that Mary and Joseph did not have adequate shelter, yet gave birth to our shelter, Jesus. You know, I can't believe that a feeding trough for animals was where a heavenly king was placed. You know, I read somewhere on the internet that evergreen trees represent poverty. Could that have some connection? Inconceivable. Isn't that ironic? Je Jesus, our shelter, having no shelter? You know, nobody believed that Jesus was the son of God. God, Jesus continues to amaze me. My refuge and fortress having no real shelter. Well, don't you guys think you're stretching the reality just a little bit? Oh, I Dana, mean, Dana. Dana. Honey, even though Jesus was a king, he laid in a manger made out of wood from a tree. There you have it, Mia. You can look at Christmas trees as shelter. Jesus is our shelter. <laughs> Everywhere they looked, there was no answer. There was no room in the inn. Then they found a place out of the weather in a lowly stable where it all began. Cause Jesus is with us in the store. Shelters us right in. Wrapped up in a manger, God's gift to the world is Son. Angels singing glory, hallelujah. Everybody look and see the Lord has come. Cause Jesus is with us in the storm. Shelters us right in his arms. You know that he lights our way to heaven with his love. Shout out. If you feel like everyone's against you, that is when you need to see everything you need's already with you. From the baby's cradle to the cross on Calvary, Jesus is with us in the storm. Shelters us right in. Rodriguez's Christmas card? Oh, honey, I don't know. We get so many, I don't remember. It's the one that shows the tree on the front. Uh -huh. And as you open it up, it shows the same tree with the needles oh, falling off. And then the tree becomes a cross and a crown. Right. Oh. It made me realize that as you look beyond the needles of a Christmas tree, you can be reminded of what a tree became when Christ died for us on the cross. That's right, honey. Even though we celebrate Jesus' birthday at Christmas, we mustn't forget the real reason he came to earth in the first place. Mm -hmm. I remember how you and dad explained the cross to me as a kid. He said that the horizontal beam reaches out like God's love. And how wide is God's love? Wide, wide enough, enough for, for the, the whole, whole world. world. You told me that same thing. Mm -hmm. He died with his arms outstretched and nailed to a cross. So that we would know that he died because he loved us as he reached out to save us all. And the vertical beam reaches up to heaven like God's grace. Amazing grace How sweet the sound
isn't just any old tree. It's an evergreen tree. This tree remains green year-round and withstands the rigors of winter. My mom taught me how these trees are like Jesus, strong and everlasting. Hey, did you hear that? An evergreen tree is like Jesus, who conquered death through the resurrection. Okay, Mom, for the first time in my life, you've stumped me. What are you talking about? Well, as an evergreen tree can live despite the death of winter, Jesus Christ lives despite his death on the cross. Evergreen is always green, which means it lives forever, and Jesus lives forever. A stew, I'll give you both that one. I'll take it. Well, while we're taking things, I'll definitely take this tree. Okay. Hannah. I'll get that for you, sir. And could you please put this one on my car too? Sure. Mom, sure. I'll take care of that tree for you, okay? Thank you so much. Have a very Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. You know that Jesus is the connection between you and God. He is the one that spans the gap between our failures and God's unconditional love and acceptance. Okay, so let me see if I've got this. Dad, you said Jesus spans the gap between God and us, yeah. right? Well, scientifically speaking, a span is the space between two supports on a bridge. And since wood can be used to construct a bridge, one could argue that Christmas trees symbolize the bridge between God and us. Jesus is the span across the gap, which is sin, and sin is what separates us from a personal relationship with God. You're absolutely right, but at an intellectual level. 
Dana, I love you so much, but you spend so much time filling your head with knowledge that you neglect your heart. Dana, I'm sorry. I think I inadvertently misled you. What do you mean? Well, you know, your whole life we've taken you to church, we've asked you to memorize Bible stories and scriptures. You know, you're the trivia queen. And that's a problem? Yes, no. Well, what I mean is this. You have all this head knowledge about the Bible, but you haven't allowed it to penetrate your heart and life. Just as you said, Jesus spans the gap between God and us, and it is only by having a close, dependent relationship with him can you be absolutely sure about your eternal future. Jesus is our bridge to heaven. All you have to do is believe that he's the only way. I've seen a lot of people's lives turned around by the free gift of Jesus. I remember when mother and father came over here from Cuba. They didn't know who Jesus was under Castro's regime. Thankfully, they learned the true meaning of Christmas, one of our first years in the States at a Christmas program. I am amazed that God provided a way for us at all. Mi amor, let Jesus come into your life and into your mind. Dana, you already know who Jesus is. All you have to do is just take the next step and believe that he died on the cross to bridge the gap for you. In fact, he wants all of us to come to him and have a personal relationship with him.
China, whether you spend your days glued to the computer screen or gluing together colored pieces of paper like your little sister, there is a place for you in heaven. Mom, I know, but sometimes I just get distracted by all the information I get my hands on. And while I have read all the scientific proofs about Jesus being born in a manger, dying on a cross as a sacrifice for our wrongdoing, and then defying death, the fact that God is still willing to forgive people for something like not recognizing Christmas is his birthday, I mean, it just bugs. I knew I wouldn't forgive you if you forgot my birthday. When is it again? Dana! Just kidding. Dana, just make sure you don't allow this to be a battle between your heart and your mind. You know, I'm glad this silly tree started our whole discussion. Stacy, let me give you a word from the wise. Didn't Jesus talk about humility? Okay, point taken. But let's just not forget what can be seen beyond the needles every time we buy our tree. Christmas is about celebrating the life of Jesus Christ. He is the living Christmas tree. Well, he cried when he was hungry, did all the things that babies do. He rocked and napped on his mother's lap. He wiggled and giggled and cooed. But there were cheers when he took his first step, and then the tears when he got his first teeth. Almost everything about this little baby was as natural as it could be. This baby made the angels sing. And this baby made a good star shine in the sky. This baby had come to change the world. This baby was God's own son. This baby was like no other one. This baby was God with us. This baby Jesus. And this baby turned into a new boy. He learned to read and write and wrestle with dad. There was the climbing of trees and the scrape of knees. All the fun that a boy's born to have. He grew taller and some things started changing. Like his complexion and the sound of his voice. There was the work to be done of a carpenter's son And all the neighbors said he's such a fine boy This boy made the angels sing And this boy made a new star shine in the sky This boy had come to change the world This boy was God's own son This boy was like no that he lived and the death that he died he showed us heaven with his hands and his heart because this man was god's own son and this man was like no other one holy and pure right from the start yeah yeah this baby made the angels sing and this baby made a new star shine in the sky change the world. This baby is God's own son. This baby is like no other one. This baby is God with us. This baby, this baby was Jesus. Yeah, yeah. This baby is Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Jesus.
who brought light to remind us we are brothers because inside we are all Compassion's 
to the hurting world around you Humility, a sacrifice that you should make Love, joy, and peace are the gifts beyond measure Patience, faithfulness, give control to Him What is your gift for His birth? so glad you came tonight to Beyond the Needles. Uh, tonight, through our performance, our song, and our dance, we've tried to capture the miracle that is Christmas through the eyes of a typical American family, maybe just like yours and just like mine. You know what I like about this story is that it's a story of a young girl who's not only asking questions, but she's searching for meaning, she's searching for truth, she's searching for a purpose in her own life searching for meaning in a holiday like Christmas. And it is so appropriate because Jesus himself said once, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh to the Father but by me. You know, 2,000 years ago, 
when Jesus was before this very important person in the Roman government, Pontius Pilate, he asked Jesus, what is truth? What is meaning? And Jesus responded, the reason I came into this world is to testify of the truth, and the truth that you know shall set you free. You know, and this is the truth. The truth is that there is a God in heaven who created the universe. He created the world. He created you and me in his image. And God has a purpose and a plan and a perfect design for each one of us. The Bible says that we are beautifully and wonderfully made. The Bible tells us that God knows how many hairs we have in our head. The Bible even tells us that God knows what our name was before we were even born. He said, I knew you even before you were in the womb of your mother. You see, God cares about us. You're special to God. The same way that Dana's parents cared about her. They were willing to talk to her. They were willing to communicate to her. They were willing to explain these deep spiritual truths. That's what parents should do today. Take the time to talk to their kids. And God has taken the time to talk to us tonight. You know, we've been talking a lot about the Christmas tree. And how many of you like Christmas trees? Right? The whole world likes Christmas trees. Now, have you gone to the mall lately? Have you seen the Christmas tree set up that they have at the mall? Or maybe you've been to Disneyland, to Main Street, USA, and they got that beautiful tree. You've been to Rockefeller Center in New York City. One of the things I've noticed about Christmas trees is that Christmas trees are like magnets. They just draw people. They bring people in. Even in your own house this Christmas, you may have a Christmas tree set up. You're going to have your family surrounded by that Christmas tree and you're going to be talking and laughing and joking and taking pictures. Well, you know what, folks? Jesus Christ is like that tree. He is a magnet and Jesus wants to bring people to him. Jesus wants to bring people, in fact, to God. He is our bridge to God. You know, the Christmas tree, when you really think about it, all a Christmas tree is is another fancy or elaborate way to present the cross. Because the Bible says that Jesus Christ died on a tree. He died on a cross. The Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 2 that Jesus did not count equality with God anything to be grasped, but he lowered himself. He took the form of a servant. He humbled himself and became obedient, and obedient unto death and death on a cross. And one of the things that we would like to see many people do tonight is to make a decision and say, God, I want to receive this perfect present, which is Jesus Christ. Because the presence of Jesus Christ, folks, is something that's going to give you joy. It's something that's going to give you peace. It's something that's going to give you happiness that will never, ever go away. You know, I know there's a lot of fancy things out there in this world, very beautiful, bright things. And the day after Christmas, you open up all those presents and you have fun with your toy. But what happens the next day? You get bored and you want another one. You see, and Jesus tonight, he could fill that gap, whatever it may be that you have in your life, that hole, that spiritual emptiness that you may have. It's not something that a spouse can fill. It's not something that a boyfriend can fill. It's not something that a new job or moving to a better neighborhood or buying a new house can fill. It's only something that God can, can fill tonight. So right now, I just want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. And if you would like just to invite Jesus Christ into your heart and have a closer walk with Him, I just want you to pray this prayer with me. God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry because of the wrong things that I've done in my life. And I want to cross that bridge over to God because I cannot cross that bridge on my own. I ask you to change my life I ask you, Lord God, to fill me with purpose and meaning and truth. Father God, come into my heart. I ask you this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You know, we're so glad you came. And I promised you something. Did you all have the chance to fill this out? These little um, questionnaires we had in your program tonight. 
please let us know who you are. Let us know if you're visiting us for the first time. And please let us know if you've asked Christ into your heart tonight. And as you exit this building, it's still early. You know, you're going to have a lot of fun tonight, so that's good. But as you leave tonight, we want to ask you to give this to one of the ushers out there. And if you are visiting us for the first time, now who am I talking to? The first timers, right? First time. If you're here tonight for the first time, give this to one of the ushers back there, and they're going to give you a free, beautiful little Christmas ornament that you can put on your own tree at home so you can remember all of us here at First Baptist Church of Downey. Thank you for coming. Merry Christmas. God bless you, and we love you. Take care. Yeah.